As we approach the holiday season, I can't help but reflect on the fact that this year we haven't had any holidays. I missed out on Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, the 4th of July, Halloween, and now it looks like Thanksgiving is literally off the table. So when all this pandemic business is over with, somebody somewhere owes me a whole handful of holidays, and I intend to collect big time. And that brings me to my subject for today, Thanksgiving in terrible times. You may recognize the music playing in the background. It's the tune to my favorite Thanksgiving hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. Written in 1636 by Lutheran pastor Martin Rinkhart, there is a fascinating story behind the hymn. But before we go there, let me ask you a hard question. How is your Thanksgiving shaping up this year? It's been a hard year, hasn't it? We've been faced with global pandemic and dealt with shutdowns and shortages. We have watched rioting and lawlessness run rampant and unchecked. We have endured curfews and other restrictions on our most cherished liberties. And we have missed out on holidays, vacations, and family gatherings. We have wrestled with very real losses in our lives caused by a devastated economy and the sickness and deaths of people that we care about. And so I ask you again, how's your Thanksgiving shaping up this year? Are you really ready to give thanks and sing, Now Thank We All Our God? Which brings me back to the story behind the hymn. Pastor Rinkhart began his ministry in Eilenburg, Germany, at the beginning of the Thirty Years' War. The walled city became the refuge for political and military fugitives, but the result was overcrowding and deadly pestilence and famine. Armies overran it three times. The Rinkart family was a refuge for the victims, even though he was often hard-pressed to provide for his own family. And during the height of a severe plague in 1637, Rinkart was the only surviving pastor in Eilenburg, conducting as many as 50 funerals in a day. He performed more than 4,000 funerals that year, including that of his own wife. It was in the context of all this that Pastor Rinkhart wrote these words in verse 1. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. Who wonders thing has done in whom this world rejoices. Now knowing what he suffered and the terrible circumstances around him, how could he write such a soaring hymn of praise, thanksgiving, and hope in God? Well, look at verse 2. It was because his focus was on God. It wasn't the gifts or the blessings of God that mattered, but the giver of those gifts, God himself. Rinkart knew that the power and presence of God transcended all the circumstances he found himself in. He knew that God would be with him both in good times and in bad, never leaving him, but helping and guiding him through life and death. Finally, in one great shout of praise to God the Father in verse 3, he clearly proclaimed his undying hope of eternity in heaven, a hope that transcended all the things, good and bad, of this world. Pastor Rinkhart had learned the secret of the prophet Habakkuk in the Old Testament, who wrote, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. So, perhaps this Thanksgiving, we can once again rise above the trials, troubles, and circumstances of life, and once again rejoice and give thanks to our loving God and Father, who keeps us 
in this world and the next. So I'd like to invite you to join with me now in worshiping the one eternal God whom earth and heaven adore as we sing together, Now Thank We All Our God. 